I'd like to show you some of the components that go to make up the top caps and load cell connections for both compression and extension testing. Here we have a typical internal submersible load cell that is set up for compression testing only. It has a load button with a domed head which interfaces with a specimen top cap with a dimple in it and the, the dome aligns with the dimple. Now this type of connection can only be used for compression because if the deviator stress goes negative then the load cell will come away from the specimen top cap. When we want to do extension testing we need to use a different type of arrangement. Here we use the GDS extension top cap arrangement. In this case, instead of having a load button, we have a special extension top cap with a, a screw on it that allows us to connect rigidly to the load cell. like this. The extension top cap has uh, a connector to allow air pressure to come from outside of the triaxial cell down through this tube to be available on this face here. The extension top cap is used along with a vilastic seal which fits the profile of the top cap. The normal top cap is used also. In use, when the test specimen is put in place, it's put in place uh, by putting the vilastic seal on the normal top cap. First of all, we smear silicone grease around the inside of this surface, and then the vilastic sleeve is put in place around the top cap. You will see there is a ridge on the vilastic seal that should match the top of the top cap. The top cap's then on top of the test specimen and the, the load cell is in place in the cell with this tube connected to a position on the top of the cell with a valve on it. While testing in the isotropic mode is going on, there is no connection between these two parts. As soon as you want to get into the anisotropic testing stage or the shearing stage, the sequence is to bring the, the uh, extension top cap down until it makes contact with the top of the normal top cap. You can then open this connector to atmosphere which applies atmospheric pressure to this interface here. The cell pressure then closes the vilastic seal tightly around the two components and allows a good seal against cell pressure. If when you open this valve, water continues to come out, then you have not managed to make a good seal here. Uh, and you should uh, close all the valves to the test specimen, remove the connection and reset the thing up again. We can see in this triaxial cell there is a load cell and ram in place. Uh, first of all, we need to remove the cell top and lay it on the bench. To remove the load cell, we first need to support it 
and turn this screw at the top which allows the load cell ram to be withdrawn. The load cell itself should not be rotated at this time, it should be just supported. All of the rotation occurs on this nut here. When the ram comes clear of the nut, the load cell can be then removed. You can take the cable right the way through to give you the load cell separate. Now, the other operation is to replace the cable of the load cell. There is a connector in the base of the ram uh, and the ram can be unscrewed from the load cell. To do this, hold the load cell body and take the, uh, the shaft of the ram and unscrew it. This may be quite stiff as it clears the o-ring. Once it is free, you can slide the cable through the ram. When the cable is changed, there is a connector at the base of the ram in the load cell, like this. If you need to change the cable, uh, you get a new cable and there is a, an alignment pattern on the connector which must match the pattern inside the load cell. Arrange the two in the same orientation, plug them together, then the ram, the, the load cell cable can go through the ram and be screwed back into position. So now the load cell ram is solidly into the load cell. There is a load button in place on the load cell and the load cell can be replaced inside the triaxial cell. Uh, the procedure of removing the load cell and replacing it will be used when you are changing the load cell to one of a different range because it is an interchangeable load cell. You can use a high range load cell when you're using stiff test specimen and a low range load cell when you're using softer test specimen. So the procedure is the reverse of taking it out. Take the electrical connector, feed it through the top of the triaxial cell, supporting the load cell ram horizontally, feed it carefully through the top making sure that you do not damage the o-ring in the top until the screw locates with the nut and then still supporting the load cell turn the, the nut until the load cell ram energizes the o-ring that's it it's feeling tighter the O-ring has now been energized and the new load cell is installed in the cell top.